Tim and Karen Lee. Now, Karen is an author, a blogger, an educator, and passionately believes in the benefit of eating a whole food, plant-based diet for health and wellness. Now, she's a retired intensive care nurse and qualified nutritionist, and she's on a mission to inspire people to eat well and live well. Well, I know that what she's going to be cooking today, and I think she's going to do just that, because um, we've got a couple of really interesting recipes, and I think it will surprise people as to how delicious our plot-based recipes and diets, and versatile that they are. So, over Thank to you. you. Thank you very much. Hi everyone. Thank you for coming along and uh, having a listen to or having a look at my demonstration. Um, I am, as Hilary said, I'm also an author and I've recently published my book, my first book, Eat Well, Live Well with a Sensitive Foodie. Um, I am the sensitive foodie. I have been um, eating a whole food plant based diet since 2011. Um, before that, when I discovered I had some food intolerances that were making me really ill and I had to give up all my favorite foods. So it was cake and bread and cheese and wine. And uh, after I finished sulking about that, I decided that I want to, still wanted to eat great food. And so I started developing recipes and finding a different way of cooking and eating that meant that I really enjoyed it. Everything tasted fantastic, but it was also really good for my health as well. And um, I believe that we literally are what we eat. Um, and um, all of my recipes uh, can be adapted for all sorts of dietary needs, but they are whole food and they are plant-based. And the whole food side of things is really important because as soon as we start taking away things and we start focusing on one aspect of food, then we miss out on just the, for so many other things as well. And so um, I don't look into counting calories or things like that, but um, just maximizing all the nutrients that you can get from food. So what I'm gonna to do today is I'm gonna show you two recipes that feature in my book. Um, I want to show you quite how easy it is to make great tasting cake because life without cake is a very sad thing. And so I'm gonna show you how to make some cake with an interesting topping. And then I'm also going to show you how to make a savoury bake. So it's a potato and celeriac type of gratin um, with a cashew nut based sauce that um, most people when they taste it wouldn't know that it's dairy free. But this sauce is really adaptable and you can use it for all sorts of things as well. And, uh, and it's a definitely a family favourite. So everything that I do is all being um, family tested, my children have been uh, brought up or in their teens, so it's all team tested. Um, and, um, and they now make this themselves as well. So it's, it's, it's very easy to do. Okay? That's, 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 do you know, so uh, when you were just saying that you, know, you have various illnesses and, and things that made you stop and listen and, yes. and listen to your body and look at what you're eating, so many people start to change their diet once they're ill. Yes. It would be so good if people would start changing their diet before they're ill. Ab absolutely. It be... And it, it is, it's, there is a change coming along. And I, I thought I was a healthy eater. Um, but I did also have quite a weight problem as well. So, um, and, and often the things that, that aren't doing us very, a, a lot of good are the things that our, our we crave. And so we kind of get stuck in this cycle as well. Um, so why, that's what I think is really important, if you really enjoy food, is to find the things that you can still enjoy, so you don't feel like you're missing out. No. Um, and one of the reasons, so I have a tagline, which is, eat food you love that loves you back. Um, and that is just really important, is yeah. to, you know, to have a really healthy relationship with the food that so you eat. So you need to reprogram your brain a little bit. Definitely, you? definitely. And, um, and what's, what I... I I do have a, a nice little smorgasbord of, of health challenges, but they, keep, they do keep me really well. And, and one of the things that I, I realized when I was working in intensive care is just how easy it is just to get trapped as a patient and to be, become disempowered and just to feel really, really unwell and not have any control over your life. And, uh, and if you can manage to, to stop yourself getting really too deep into that, 
you can have you can still live a really great life and real feel really well even if you have got health challenges so even if you do get there it's better to prevent it but if you are there then you can do lots and lots of things about it positive change absolutely yes so what are, so the recipes you're doing today is a, a cake i mean chocolate cake yes this is so, great so um i am a big cake lover so yeah so <laughs> good i'm glad to hear it so um, I, one of the benefits of making a plant-based cake is it's actually really easy to do. It's much easier than, than creaming lots of butter and eggs and everything. And afterwards, you can lick the bowl without feeling that you're, you're worried about eating raw eggs as well. So um, like I say, the recipes that I'm doing are, are, in, are in my book. Uh, I have a stall over in the plant-based gazebo over there. So do come and have a, a look afterwards. And I've been, I have prepared things earlier as well, so there are some samples to take as well. So um, the, key, the key about it is that when you're doing this is you prepare all your dry ingredients first, and then you prepare all your wet ingredients, and then you make sure that your oven is ready, that your cake tin or muffin tin is ready, because when you mix the wet and the dry ingredients together, you have to work really quickly because, um, because there's no eggs in, in, in your recipe, you want to maximize the raising agent. So you want the bubbles to be working in the oven, not outside the oven. So the key really is to be really prepared. It's a really helpful tip, actually. Right? Really prepared. Now, the other random thing that I like to do, and there's a few people here who have done my course, so they know this, is I like to use a whisk. <laughs> to get all my dry ingredients ready mixed. So Great idea. Yeah, so in here I've got um, some, um, this is, I've actually got some spelt flour in here, um, but if you can use whole grain, whole milk, whole milk flour, self-raising flour. If you're gluten-free, then use a gluten-free self-raising mix. Um, and I have got some cocoa powder, baking powder, and a tiny pinch of salt. So I wanna make sure that they're all well mixed together because I'm going to work very quickly. Then on my wet ingredients, um, now I'm using soy milk. The soy milk, the molecular structure is, is the most, the closest to dairy. So it works really well in cakes. Um, oat milk's not too bad. Rice milk is a little bit too, too weak. Um, nut milks are too heavy. They work if you don't want to lift, but if you want your cakes to rise, then you need something that's not going to be just heavy and get rid of your bubbles. So again, you're maximizing your bubbles. Uh, and another really useful tip, actually, because I think people will, if they're not using dairy milk, they will substitute for any of those, whatever yes. you've got. And yeah. I think that that's a really helpful tip, and it's good to know why. Yeah, and it, I think it depends on who you're baking for as well. So if you're trying to really impress someone, then you want it to look really good. If you don't mind a flat cake, if you just want no the flavour, then no it doesn't really matter. Oh, yeah. Depends how desperate you are. So what I'm doing now is I'm actually making some um, buttermilk. So um, this just, again, helps with the bubbles, helps the rise. Um, and I'm using um, some lemon juice. You can use uh, vinegar if you like, but... The idea of vinegar in a cake to me does a little. So um, I use a little bit of lemon juice, and the reason um, the lemon juice is also helpful is that there is various other nutrients uh, within the cocoa powder and with the whole grains with some iron and some magnesium and other lovely things. And then lemon and the citrus and lemon actually helps you absorb the, the nutrients better. So, so, every, so it justifies you eating cake because it makes cake good for you. So what the buttermilk does, it just, or what the lemon does, it's just slightly sours. And I don't know if you can see that, but now my coconut milk's just gone slightly thick. So that's gonna help with the raising agents. Um, and now what else we're gonna put in here, excuse me, is olive oil, please. <laughs> Forgot the olive oil. So um, I don't use, um, I don't, thank you. I don't, the only vegetable oils I use is either olive oil or um, sometimes some um, rapeseed oil. It depends, because I'm using food for health, so I'm using the healthiest oils that I can. Um, most of my fats come from whole fats, so like nuts and seeds and avocados and things like that. But when it comes to cake, you can use fruits and vegetables, but it, again, it makes quite a solid cake. And what I want to show, to, to show today is kind of like a medium healthy cake. 
Um, and uh, so, so I use a little bit of olive oil, which does have some, some benefits in there as well. And um, this, I uh, just need a little measuring jug as well, sorry. I have a measuring jug somewhere. No, oh, this will do. Oh, yeah, no, here we go. See, I always thought I was organised, and yet. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I'm going to use uh, just 90 ml. So in the, in the terms of cake, um, this isn't actually that much oil. Um, so I'm using some of the fats in the, in the soya milk as well. So that is going in there. I'm also going to use um, some vanilla essence, if we know where that is. Yeah, all oh, right, next one. Um, a little bit of vanilla essence, that just helps with the richness, richness of the cake. So that's just a teaspoon of that, which is uh, a lid and a bit. You may have noticed I'm a bit rough with my, with my ingredients, as in this will do. Um, and that's the other benefit. You don't have to be quite as exact when you're doing these cakes as you do when you're doing um, uh, cakes traditionally. Now, the other thing is we're going to put some sugar in. Now, I don't, the, the only sugar that I use is um, coconut sugar. Now, this is, um, it is quite expensive, but you use less of it. Um, and the reason I use this is it's the, it is still a refined sugar, but it, the, the way that it's processed, it's, um, most sugar, white sugar goes through a really heavy chemical refining process, whereas this is sugar cane that's been heated, and then when it, when it um, cools down the, 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 sh the water, basically, the sugary water then just gets blended up. So there's no added chemicals and things into it. Um, and it is actually really super sweet, so you need less of it. So that's it. So I've got my, all my bits there together. Karen, are things like um, coconut sugar, is, is that easily to, e easily available? I mean, can you get it in most supermarkets or is you, it more specialist? Yeah, you can get it in some supermarkets, but it can be quite expensive. Okay. Um, you can buy it online, but there are stores like uh, Grape Tree, um, where you can buy it there, that's usually where I get it from. Um, or Holland and Barrett sometimes have it as well. But the, 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 it's actually often cheaper if you get it online. Yeah. Um, but you can get it in supermarkets, but like I say, they tend to be quite expensive versions. So, um, And it is acquired to taste. If you haven't got any, then just use some proper brown sugar. Some brown sugars have just had colouring left in them. So, so the least refined version of sugar. Uh, you, that you can um, use um, and like I say you can just use apple sauce as a sweetener and it also ha it helps as a binding agent but um, they might be a bit hardcore for you today so I don't want to scare you off so um, right so I'm ready here's my tins I prepared earlier in true Blue Peter fashion and try not to get, let them blow away so I'm just literally going to bung my wet ingredients into my dry ingredients I'm going to stand on my tiptoes because I'm a little bit short for this bench and um, just, can't see this, but I'm literally just getting it all mixed together as much as possible, just scraping at the bottom and then that is all I'm going to do. Make sure it's in and then get it transferred into the tins. Now if I was at home, I'd be pouring this in and getting it everywhere because I am the messiest cook in the world as my poor long-suffering husband will uh, attest to, um, but I'm being polite today. So we're just putting a couple of tablespoons into each case. So you want the cases about three quarters full. Um, but I'm work like I said, I'm working as quickly as possible because I want to get this in the oven. Um, this then bakes for about 18 minutes. The aim is that by the time I've finished, I should be able to show you how they've risen. There's one last thing you need to do before it goes in the oven, is give it a good bang. And that just again helps the bubbles get going. And then it's going in the oven, hopefully. I just need to move things in the oven because I've got the bake in there as well. Excuse me. Let's just move that down. There we go. And that's going to go in the oven for 18 minutes. Could you time that for me? Thank you. So I'm going to put this to one side. And we will come back to that in a minute. Okay, and so, so on to the, the bake, the celeriac granta. Yes, that's right. This sounds, this sounds delicious. Actually. Okay, so, so let me just move this mess out of the way. Ooh. I must
must say that looked very easy. It That's is a that, very, very easy cake. It it's is that of, easy. And not too much of hard work. And, of, no, of, so and, it, and it's great. So if you've got kids, it's actually much easier for them to do it. For them to do it. So, so because you could just put things in a bowl and mix it together. Yeah, and it's quicker as well, so they don't lose interest quite so, so quickly. Really um, and none of that beating and having to get everything in. More eggshells going in. It's yeah, really absolutely. And like I say, at the end, you can just lick the bowl. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so the gratin. Um, one of the things I just... I thought I'd mention is, is sometimes with plant-based cooking people think you need a lot of really expensive equipment to do it. Um, now it's useful to have lots of toys in the kitchen but they don't have to be really expensive. Um, I don't know if you heard Julie talked before me and she was saying about her blender, get one um, as the, the most expensive that you can and that, that's true if you're going to be using it a lot and also grinding lots of nuts and seeds. Um, it is worth investing, having been through a few myself. Um, but there are other things, equipment that you don't necessarily need to be uh, spend too much money on. Um, so I use, uh, because there's a lot of chopping and slicing and things when you're cooking from scratch, I use food processor quite a bit. Um, now this is one I, I, um, I bought recently, but I bought it second hand on Facebook. Brilliant. And, um, and it, just, it cost me £30. And it's, um, it's third hand now, so okay. it's also really good for the environment and, and it works absolutely brilliantly. So you don't have to, and it does all the slicing for me because otherwise um, I'm very accident prone. So I, my fingers are surprisingly not covered in plasters, um, but you, could, you can use mandolins and things like that. But if you've got a thing and you can just mm, through it's it, quick. it's yeah. much better. Yeah. Um, and the other, other bit of equipment... Um, that we're going to use in a minute is one of these. So I'm sure a lot of people have got a stick blender um, which you can zap your soups with but this one comes with the little pot um, and the size of the pot is, is, is really useful um, because you can make pestos and um, all sorts of small things in it. Sometimes the other bigger blenders are too big for it and we're going to and make they're, them... They're not expensive. They're, they're not small, expensive, they're, 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 no. The only problem with them is if you drop them on the floor, they break quite easily. <laughs> she I, I says think, from... I was going to say, I think there's a bit of experience coming out there. Yes, <laughs> indeed. Right. Okay, so for the, for the gratin, um, so I've sliced um, the potato and celeriac already. You, um, you don't have to use potato and celeriac. Um, you could just use potato with some onions in, or you could, if you don't want to use white potatoes, you can use sweet potatoes or any other root vegetables from Swede or, or whatever it is that you have got. I'm just going to move these out here. So, um, and it literally is. So I've greased, I have greased the, the base of this, um, no, what is it? Yeah, dish, that's the word, thank you. Uh, it's because I've got a hundred of things, one thing's going through my head at the minute. Um, so I've just greased it because you do, it does get a bit stuck otherwise. Um, but again, I've just put some olive oil on that. So I'm just doing a layer of potato and then we're going to pop a layer of the celeriac. And I love celeriac because it has a lovely deep flavour um, and it, it, it creates creaminess yeah. in itself as well. Fantastic for soups. Um, and then on each layer, we're just going to put uh, some, some herbs. Um, so with plant-based cooking, because you're maximising your flavour, you, use a lot of, uh, you do use a lot of herbs and spices. And, um, and you can, again, you can just adapt it to whatever flavours you like. If you like it a bit spicy, you can put some chilli flakes in. I'm just using some thyme and some oregano, and a little bit of black pepper, and then a pinch of salt. Now, salt, again, is, um, is one of those things people say, oh, I can't can't add salt and it's really good to minimize your salt as much as possible but one of the advantages of when you're eating a whole food plant-based diet is the fact that because you're not eating processed foods and you're eating foods in their natural form so they've got their natural balance of, of sodium and, and potassium you can can add a little bit um, of salt in 
basically. I but think just a little bit because I think you're it's, not getting it's it. The from other it's the processed it food. Se- it's the secret sauce that you don't even know you're and eating. And there is so much in yeah. it. Yeah, absolutely. Because it's it, it makes things taste better. Yeah. So um, and when when you're eating processed food, you're losing so much of what is in that food. Um, and all those lovely nutrients and the flavour just goes because um, a lot of it's just dead food. Um, and so with this, a little bit, not too much. And again, I tend to use Himalayan salt um, just for the same principle of the coconut sugar. It's slightly less refined, so it still has a lot of um, sodium chloride in it. But whereas normal table salt is like 99%, ooh, 99% sodium chloride. Um, Himalayan salt's about 80, 85%, and then it's got some other um, minerals in it as well. So, you know, it's, it's still salt, but it's slightly healthier. So, just, so I've done two layers. I'm just topping up this, this other layer here, bunging it, bung it out all on, trying to make it look pretty. So you can use an assortment of vegetables. I've, I've seen these sorts of things done with sort of even parsnips and carrots oh, and things, yeah. all those sorts Lovely. of things as well. It's all about what's in season as well. Yeah. So yeah, just use whatever it is. Obviously, it tends to be more root vegetables because of you course. can keep the, keep the shape. But if you don't like one, then just Swap find it. the ones that you want. Okay, so that's just all layered up there. And then we're going to make the... Um, the sauce. So um, the only preparation in advance that you need to do for this is uh, is with the cashew nuts, they need to be soaked. Now ideally, if you're super organised, um, then you will have soaked them maybe overnight or at least for a couple of hours. But if, like me, you come in and you think, right, what am I going to make? Oh, I forgot to soak the cashew nuts. Just put them in boiling water for 10 minutes. It's absolutely fine. It's, it's, with, cash, with some nuts, you're soaking them to get away some of, some of the anti-nutrients in, in, the, in the coating. But with cashews, because they've already been peeled, because cashews themselves, when you, when you grow them, the, the shells are really toxic. So um, they're all, all, that's why you only ever see a cashew nut, a naked cashew nut. You never see it with its coating on. Um, so and they're nice and soft. So these were soaked um, in some hot water, then drained, and then I've just, as you can see, I've just covered it with some water. And then in in the mix, we um, I'm going to add a um, teaspoonful of Dijon mustard. Now this is the only kind of processed thing that's going in here. Um, I like this just because it adds some flavour. But if you have a problem with mustard, a lot of people are are really intolerant to it, or the vinegar in it, or something like that, then just admit it. Um, You don't have to have that in there. Um, And I'm going to add a clove of garlic as well. And I've lost my knife. (laughs) Have you got, I just have a sharp knife. Lovely. Yeah, that's great. So again, some people, especially if you've got IBS or something like that, you can't have garlic. Um, so if you don't want garlic in it, don't. Or you could uh, put some garlic powder in it if you haven't got fresh garlic. Um, it's always useful to have a, a good stock of, of herbs and spices. So I'm just roughly chopping that up. It doesn't need to be perfectly done. And then I'm going to add a little bit of salt and pepper. Now you could also um, use nutritional yeast in this. So has, has anybody used nutritional yeast? Yeah. It's um, yeah, it's a plant-based uh, dried yeast, but it's deactivated yeast. But it has a, a cheesy flavour to it. So if you um, if you're missing your cheese, um, that that lovely savoury flavour, it's useful to have. So you can use this as a as a cheese sauce as well. Um, this is where these high-speed blenders come in handy. So excuse me, I'm just going to make a noise for a second. should be done, shouldn't take very long. Right, yum yum. Always test, always test, check your flavours before you put it on. 
So as you can see, this is like um, single cream consistency. Now this is actually still a tiny bit too thick. So because you can always add more rather than take it away again, just, just cover it. And then if, because you need to have it pouring so it goes in all the cracks. So it, you can add a little bit more water into it. But for purposes of today, I'm just gonna pour it over the top. So you just pour it over, shake it round, just try and get it down below into all the edges. So, so presumably the um, cashew nut is quite a, a good source of protein. Absolutely, well. yeah, yeah. And because it's an, a protein and whole fats. Okay. So with a whole food plant-based diet, because you're getting the full nutrition, um, there's fats and proteins and carbohydrates in practically everything because essentially they are just a, a collection of molecules held together in, in, in some way. So you, the, the fat in there hasn't been take, it, it hasn't been extracted and then you've got pure fat like you do with sunflower oil and all the other oils. So you're getting, um, you've got all the fibre in there because obviously fibre is really, really important. Um, we hear a lot about it that most people don't have enough fibre in their diet. And if you think about your, your in, the length of your intestines, um, they're incredibly long. And so fibre actually helps keep things moving, but it also acts as like as a natural Brillo pad. So as it's all going through, it's cleaning inside, it's looking after your gut lining, um, and um, it's also feeding the bacteria in your microbiome as well, which uh, uh, we have this symbiotic relationship with, and they, they do a lot of things that actually keep us as healthy. They, put, they help produce hormones and lots of these other chemicals that have different um, roles in our body and help us keep healthy metabolically, um, yeah, help our metabolism work properly because we have all these backup systems. We, so we have, we're designed to survive, so we're, we're a finely tuned machine, um, and if one, doesn't, one system is being challenged, either it's not got the certain nutrient that it needs, or it's a bit stressed or whatever, then there's backup, and then if we haven't got that, then there's another backup. So, uh, so often, um, we're actually about three or four times backup, which, is not, which needs more and more nutrients, and so if you're not, Get it, giving your body what it needs to operate properly. By the time you're using your backup system, you definitely aren't. And that's how it's so easy just to fall into um, to ill health. And this is often the start of chronic health problems. So the um, so that's your gratin finish, and that that's just it. goes in the oven. That, like that, that just goes you? in the oven. So you can cover it with um, some tin foil. Um, or ideally, to just to save on resources, if you've got a nice casserole, casserole dish that's got a glass lid to it, then use that. Um, I couldn't find my one. Um, but otherwise, you just cover it with tin foil. It bakes in the oven for 45 minutes. And then you can take the cover off and then just let it brown on the top. Okay. And then we're going to take out the other one and hopefully it's going to look beautiful. My muffins are nearly ready as well. Okay, we'll have a chance Thank to you. taste this as well. So, here we go. So, ooh. sorry, my microphone was cold on my bag. So, what it turns out to be like is so, this is all being cooked, and then you can you see it just comes out all, all baked and, and firm and lightly golden. And, um, and hopefully really super tasty. So what we're gonna do is, um, just gonna let that cool for a minute because it's super hot. And um, then we will put some bits out on the table down there so you can try it and hopefully you'll enjoy it. Now obviously, um, I, if you have a nut allergy, please don't try it. Um, um, but if you do, then you, you can still make this dish. You just need to use a, a different uh, cream alternative. So you can use, um, make oat cream at home, or you can buy oat cream, you could use soya cream. Um, so there are alternatives that hopefully will work for you. Okay? Right. We just pop this over here out the way, and then I'm going to show you the final bit, the topping for the chocolate muffins. I think this is fascinating, and I, I think there's a, there's a secret ingredient in this which is going to surprise a lot of people, actually, isn't there? Uh, yes, yes, indeed. Let me just clean this up because you don't want garlic in your muffin topping. 
that's one strange ingredient too far, I think. Okay, so, um, so as I said earlier, I love cake, um, but I have um, one of my health problems. Uh, I follow a, a very special program for it, so I don't eat um, any refined fat. So when I first went plant-based, when I used to make cake, I could just use a dairy-free sunflower oil spread. Um, to make your cake frosting or your buttercream and it works really well so um, but then when I, I changed again the way that I ate so the, the spread was out but I still wanted to have something to go on my cake um, and so um, I, I spent a while thinking about it and then I was suddenly inspired so I actually used sweet potato um, as an ingredient, as a face there going, ooh, I'm sure about that. <laughs> um, so, so what are the benefits uh, about using something like sweet potatoes? When you blend it up, you get this structure still, because otherwise your cake frosting is just going to fall off your cake. Um, but of course it's sweet as well, so you still need to add a little bit of sweetness into it. But the other benefit is the sweet potatoes are just such a magical food. And you know that they are because just purely by their colour. So this amazing orange colour means it's packed full of um, phytonutrients like beta carotenes. Um, and the, the actual magical part for me about eating a whole food plant-based diet is that is these um, much missed benefit of phytonutrients. So we evolved eating, um, foraging a lot. Um, and so you have whatever you can get your hands on. So people are naturally, um, would eat a lot of fresh produce, whatever it was in season. And so a lot of our metabolic processes really rely on these lovely extra little nutrients, um, which a lot of people are missing out. Um, so the government guidelines of five a day of fresh fruit and vegetables and um, only 20% uh, of adult population actually have reached that, which is which. Uh, and they're not now no, saying that actually that's even that's not really enough. No, absolutely. More, yeah, more like it, ten a day. It, ideally, yes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Brownies are done. Um, so, um, so again, one of the the benefits of, of of when you're adding a sweet potato into your cake is that it's helping you have some fresh vegetable. Um, so and is that just roasted in the oven in foil? Yes, it has been, yeah. So again, it's something you need to do in advance. See how my muffins have risen. Wow. So um, let me just check. Wow. Yep, there you go. They are done. So it was 18 minutes in the oven. Obviously, it depends what your oven's like. Um, some ovens take a little bit longer, some a little bit less, but they've risen beautifully. So I'm just going to put them to one side. Um, so the, the phytonutrients and things like sweet potato, they actually have loads of um, something called antioxidants in them. So every process in our body, there are all these chemical processes, and then with every, every process there's always some leftover bits. And so they're often these um, active hydrogen ions, which if they're le they, they like to be paired with things, and if they get left by themselves, they get up to mischief and start creating damage um, in, our, in our body. So, and that's just normally. So if we're exposed to environmental toxins and stresses, stress, just mental stress, creates a lot of these free radicals as well. Um, and so if you're not eating a lot of food that has a lot of uh, antioxidants in it, then there's damages going on in your cells and it right is down at, your, at cellular level. So that's, this is why, this is the secret to eating a whole food plant-based diet is the fact that you're just flooding your body with these lovely phytonutrients which are, which are helping you. So, um, so in there I've got this medium sweet potato, which it says baked in the oven. You can steam it if you want as well. Steaming it makes it slightly uh, moister. Um, so, um, did you just do that? It, it would wrap it in foil in its skin. You didn't have to. No, you can. Oh, I'd pe if when I steam it, I'd, pe I'd, I'd peel it. it. But if it's in the it, oven, it's you just in yeah. The, yeah. So basically, if I know I want to do this and I've got the oven on, I'll just do a sweet potato, and then I might use it the next day or a, a day after or something. It keeps well. And how long does that take roughly in the oven? 
Um, it depends how big it is, between about 30 minutes or so. Okay, um, I'm looking for the vanilla essence now. Did you? Oh, hang on, just need to. So what's going in here is got a sweet potato. I've got three tablespoons, thank you, of um, maple syrup. Now maple syrup, again, it's, um, it is, um, doesn't have any fiber in, but it is a slightly more natural sugar um, alternative. Um, and it's lovely and sweet as well. So um, what I find is uh, once you start changing the way that you eat, your taste buds change. And so... Um, quite quickly. Th well, remarkably quite. quickly. Yeah, the, the cells in your tongue turn over within um, like a couple of weeks. So at first things might taste a little bit bland and then suddenly you, you go and eat a cake that's been made that's packed full of um, refined sugar and you're kind of like, oh, you know, you suddenly yes. realise quite how sweet it is, yeah. So I'm just going to just pop this in here, get this the right way around. And um, so normally when you're making a, 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 a frosting, um, you need to sort of start whipping everything up. This doesn't take very long at all. And so the final magic ingredient is, now I use in my topping, I use raw cacao powder. Now, so the sweet potato's got phytonutrients in it. So does cacao. So raw cocoa's got some really, really wonderful um, uh, anti-inflammatory phytonutrients in it as well. Um, it also has things like some magnesium and some zinc. And so again, it turns your cake into a health food. Um, if you haven't got raw, because again, it's a little bit expensive, then use cocoa powder. Cocoa powder is, has been heated. So, and as soon as you start heating something, it does take away some of the nutritional benefit from it. But, you know, if that's what you've got to hand, then, then use it. Um, you know, you don't want to um, price yourself out of eating it's, it's making the best out of but what I, I have seen it in large supermarkets, the, the, the raw cacao powder. Yes. So it is, and you don't use that much. No, and no. It's, you it don't. is a bit of a treat. So, it um, is. And it's a, just a little bit stronger than um, cocoa powder as well. Right. There you go. That's it. Goodness me. And see? You just mixed it all together. And then that's ready to go onto the top of your cake. And um, we have, I have made some already. So, um, my lovely assistant, with it, if my banner's not going to fall over. Um, so, I've, I've. Can you just pass me one up to show? Thank you. So, these are ones I've made before. So, literally, just says my muffin, and I've put some of the, the topping on the top, and, um, and it just looks like a normal muffin with chocolate coating on the top. So well, we've got some samples for you to try down there as well. Who would imagine that it's got sweet potato? I've never seen that done before, and it's really interesting. Thank and you. Um, yeah, I've got to try that. I Good, that I do hope great. so. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's it's just a different way of doing it. And the thing is, if it's not sweet enough for you to start off with, then just add a little bit more maple syrup. Um, yeah. And make, the vanilla essence also makes things a little bit richer and sweeter as well. Um, and, you know, if necessary, then add a tiny bit of sugar, but just try and wean yourself away so that, you, uh, you, so that you're eating things as healthy as possible. Now, I, I, did, I, I was thinking the other day, I wonder how this recipe compares with a normal chocolate muffin and chocolate frosting recipe. So I've got, because um, I work as a nutritionist as well, I have a program on my computer um, and which I can analyse the nutritional side. And um, so calorie wise, this is half the calories of a, a normal. Me. So this is half, this is So big. this is guilt free? Uh, guilt -free well, it muffin. still does have calories in it, but of then course. we need them for energy. Obviously it had a lot more fibre in it. Um, it had a lot, about half the fat in it, especially half the saturated fat. But it also goes down into um, mineral and, and, you know, vitamin. And what I found quite fascinating is one of the questions you always get asked on a whole food plant-based diet, is, with, apart from where do you get your protein from, is what about calcium? So when you're making cake, normally it has butter, it has milk, um, all those things, chocolate often has dairy in it as well. So then my little cupcake here has actually got more calcium per cupcake than a cupcake made with butter and milk. Mm. It also had more magnesium and other nutrients Goodness. as well. So it was quite interesting. 
um, just for my own mind, is to see how, yes. how, it, how it compared. I, I think so many people think that if you sort of start giving up meat or fish or dairy, hmm. it's about denial. Oh, definitely and, not. And I think you've done a fantastic yeah. job of showing you, actually it's not about denying you something, it's about eating just differently. It is. Um, and that's, that. It, it shouldn't be a negative thought, it no. should be actually really positive. And, and one of the things, yeah, healthy. absolutely. So one of the things I say to people when they start making changes is, is just to eat more, but you eat more of the good things. Yeah. So even if you just start eating more fresh fruit and vegetable if that's the only change you make then you are giving your body more nutrients in order to support it and then and then over time you find that your gut's feeling a little bit healthier and then you might start making some other changes as well and it doesn't have to be really scary um, or overwhelming because you do it according to what works for, for you so some people are like overnight you know all or nothing throw themselves into it but they're often people who then struggle um, yeah. You know, it might not necessarily be the best way of doing it. So any change is good change, and just opening your mind to how how things can be slightly different. Yes, just a step, at, maybe a step at a time is is the way forward for lots of people. Yeah, and I hope I've shown you that it's not that difficult. So I'm I'm not a, a, a qualified chef or, or cook. I just love food. In fact, I failed cookery at school. Um, because I never followed the recipes properly um, and I made a mess and so they said oh I don't think you should do that <laughs> so um, but these are just things that we've de developed in, within the family so and this is what is in the book as well so there's over a hundred recipes in here um, they're all being like I said all team tested family um, the, 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 the family have grown up with this um, some have been influenced by our time we spent in India because we lived in India for three years as well. Um, and, um, and then they're just ways that you can bring um, more great tasting food into your daily life. Karen, thank you so much. Thank can you. I have a round of applause, please? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Lots of fans in the audience. Now, as, as Karen said earlier, she will be in this sort of plant-based